Hi, I'm Dr. Vincent Ho. I'm a gastroenterologist and a senior university lecturer. I'm also the gut doctor. This is a story of constipation. Constipation means different things to different people, but one simple definition is that it's a condition where there's less frequent bowel movements and difficulty in passing often hard poo. In the medical literature, we refer to poo as stools. It's a very common problem, but in order to understand this better, let's talk about what happens normally. Food material in the small bowel is mixed with water, but around 90% of that water content is absorbed by the small bowel. Nutrients are also extracted from the small bowel and that leftover material or stool passes out of the small bowel into the colon. When the stool enters the colon, we start seeing the water content being stripped away from it in a very active process known as absorption. The stool travels up the ascending colon, past the midsection of the colon known as the transverse colon, and becomes progressively more solid as it heads down the descending colon into the sigmoid colon. The stool is propelled along the colon by the contraction of muscles inside the colon wall, a process known as peristalsis. In the colon, a unique type of peristalsis occurs called mass movements. Mass movements are long, slow moving, but extremely powerful peristaltic contractions that occur three or four times a day in the colon. Think of these mass movements as giant waves pushing along a surfer in a pipe. In this case, the surfer is the stool being propelled through the colon in an amazing tube ride. There is another type of peristaltic movement called haustral contractions, which mixes the stool and occurs approximately every 30 minutes. Together, the mass movements and haustral contractions push the largely dehydrated stool into the rectum. Now, sometimes that peristaltic contraction can be really slow, and this is called slow transit constipation, where there is a delay in the time for stools to pass through the colon and out as waste. Young women in particular are more likely to experience slow transit constipation, which can lead to chronic constipation. The slow transit through the colon means that more water can be absorbed, leading to hardier, drier stools. Symptoms often present around puberty, but can develop at any age. People with this condition often have very infrequent bowel movements and rarely feel the urge to poo, even if weeks have gone by without a bowel motion. Now in the rectum, a stool fills it, the walls stretch and the pressure inside the rectum increases. However, it's our anal sphincters that help to keep stool inside the rectum. We have two anal sphincters, the internal and external anal sphincters, and both of these are rings of muscle. The internal anal sphincter is not under voluntary control and relaxes once stool fills the rectum. Signals are sent to the brain and we're ready now for defecation, that is passing a bowel motion out of the body. But one last ring of muscle, the external anal sphincter has final say. The external anal sphincter is under voluntary control and so we can help to determine when to pass a bowel motion by consciously relaxing the external anal sphincter to pass a bowel motion. Around a third of people with chronic constipation will have a condition called dysenergic defecation, which refers to the incoordination of defecation. Many such patients may not know how to push effectively or they're pushing excessively or straining against a tight, non-relaxing external anal sphincter. They may not be consciously aware of this, and in some cases, it can be happening from early childhood. Probably the most common reason for chronic constipation is functional constipation. And this is where the bowel is healthy, but isn't working effectively due to a problem with the connection between the brain and the gut. Factors that can lead to functional constipation include stress, lifestyle choices such as poor diet, and lack of physical activity. Now, as mentioned, much of the water content of stool is absorbed from the colon and the average volume of stool in a bowel motion is around 100 mils. But despite this, our stools are made up of around 75% of water. Once the water content falls below 75%, any slight decrease in water content can lead to quite a large increase in the thickness of that stool. And the thicker the stool, the more difficult it will be to pass. 
An experiment in pigs found a decrease in the water content of stools by just 20% led to an increase in the thickness of that stool by 240 times. This is why it's important to drink more water when you're dehydrated as this will reduce constipation. Fiber can hold onto water and is therefore able to soften stools that are too hard. We know that a high fiber diet can lead to a quicker colon transit time. Colon transit time is a time for stools to pass through the colon and out as waste. On the other hand, a poor fiber diet is associated with constipation. We know that exercise and particularly aerobic exercise is helpful for constipation. Constipation is far more common in older people, often due to low fiber diets, dehydration, lack of adequate physical activity, major medical conditions, and the use of medications that can contribute to constipation. On that note, the effects of medications such as opiates is considered a secondary cause of constipation. There are many secondary causes of constipation to consider, including neurological conditions such as Parkinson's disease, low thyroid hormone levels, high calcium levels in the blood, and even blockages of the colon from colon cancer. Constipation occurs more often in women than in men. Women often report constipation just before and during their periods, which may be due to the effects of the hormone progesterone. We also know that constipation is very common in pregnancy. This is due in part to a surge in progesterone, which slows the body's ability to digest food and expel the waste. During pregnancy, water absorption from the gut increases, which can make stools drier. In late pregnancy, an enlarging uterus can also slow the forward movement of stools. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave any comments and questions below. And again, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already for some great gut content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.